Good afternoon, Jason here, Birchfield Family Farm. We have another amazing gift of a weather day today, early December, up over 50, sunshine, gorgeous out here. I was out here in the pasture yesterday with the kiddos, we were messing around, waiting on the water to fill, you know, a lot of times, uh, when we see manure pats laying around that have been here for at least a few weeks, especially when it's been sunny, they dry out, kind of get to be like uh, big hockey pucks. And uh, sometimes we, you know, mess around, kick at them or whatever. I'll even sometimes, um, just because they're not runny at all, I'll take some and just chuck them in the compost pile. You know, when we don't have anything else to do, but yesterday was really interesting. Out here in paddock two yesterday, waiting on the water to fill. And we started doing just that, kicking over some of these pats. I made a little surprising discovery. So cattle are in paddock one. It's been yeah, about three weeks since they've been on paddock two here. It's about a three week old cow pat. And uh, if you're grossed out by this kind of thing, now's the time to turn it off. I wanna show you what we discovered. inside of these pads. There's one right there. See him? We were noticing several of these These other ones. Look at this. So I'm seeing I'm seeing these these red colored beetles yesterday and these pats. And they are alive. Maybe a little chilly. Let's see, you know, three, four. Unbelievable. Look at him disappear.
just doing a little research after finding these guys. Scientific name, I know I'm gonna butcher this, Aphodius, Aphodius Fimitarius. I'll put a picture up. Uh, why, why am I so excited about these things? I just did a video a few weeks back on dung beetles and their importance. You know, I'm looking around at entomologists I can contact, you know, looking to buy, you know, dung beetles to inoculate in the pasture to, to help get rid of these pats, right? Rotational grazing, this is important because when you return to a paddock, the cattle are not going to touch the grass around the pats. So how do we, how do we break those down without additional uh, labor inputs? Uh, the dung beetle is, is one of those ways um, that is, is going to help out. We're here in southwest Ohio, and the amazing thing to me is we, we've only been doing the rotational grazing here for two years. This is our second year, the end of our second year, and, you know, uh, this isn't even the time of year where you typically see the dung beetle population at its highest. It's, it's typically uh, mid-spring. Uh, and then early fall. But well, here we are in December now. Could some of this mild weather through the fall uh, have helped help that out? Maybe so. But in the wintertime, they're gonna go down below those paths, burrow, uh, and that's where they're gonna ride things out uh, over the winter. But to see these things out here, uh, you know, just to make that discovery and not have to, you know, to import whatever you know and not that that would work anyway you having these species here uh, as native now um, oh, I'm just tickled to death okay here's an interesting observation it seems like these pads that are not as or were not as runny that was a runny one there you can tell how flat it is this one sits up a little higher I'm noticing just more activity these higher ones. Yeah, see? Right there. Man. How do they stay so clean in there? That guy's shining. There's another one. So maybe another reason to, you know, We've talked a bit about manure, but to manage your cattle to where that's, they've got these healthy pats that are not a liquid, you know, coming out like this, a little more solid. They sit up, potentially more, you know, beetle and insect population in these. Uh, managing multi-species, um, grazing you know we got chickens out here on this these paddocks we've got uh, sheep and lamb we, we've got the red devon cattle you know one of my questions couple questions here um, you know because we see these dung beetles present now what other species on down the line uh, that, that preys on these or you know what other species growth in this ecosystem are we going to see that maybe you wouldn't see in more of a a conventional setting that's my first question my second question for some of you uh, folks out there familiar with the dung beetle um, and multi-species grazing do you think if we next year I want to run chickens behind the cattle to bust up these cow pats do you think um, that the chickens would destroy this beetle population uh, that's a question very pressing question on my mind should I just leave it alone right and not not run the, the chickens behind them um, I don't know you know I'm, these are things I'm gonna be looking at and researching over the winter uh, if you have a comment or you know something about this uh, chime in